What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kiki Knowledge. Today, we'll be talking about the difference between soulmates and twin flames. So, let's get into this. Now, what I'm going to do at the end of this video, I'm going to, I did a whole series, like, on karmic partnerships and all of this years ago. It's in a whole playlist. And yeah, I'm going to put the link to the playlist at the end of this video. I really suggest going to watch those videos because the energy and element that I was in, man, okay? But what we're going to do is just we're going to rehash and, and give new perspective towards these things. So this, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. So on, on some level, you're going to hear things that you already know because I think everyone actually understands the differences or, or understands the concept of soulmates fairly well the monkey wrench is this thing called twin flames all right so where we're going to start with it is in the fact that when we're trying to look at like cosmic karmic partnerships and all of that we gotta go outside of ourselves as souls as souls as individual souls right now and go back to the fact that we're actually a part of soul groups, right? And in the intelligence of yourself as a being, you understand and remember your mission. You remember, okay, this is actually what our soul group is here to do. And these are the experiences, da da da, da. So this is where soulmates come in. Your, your soulmates are mates, friends, people, other like-minded beings from your soul group made or are here to assist you in learning particular lessons within the incarnation and the beauty of life how it goes is like we're we're learning at the same time so i'm teaching something to you you're teaching something to me now the hue of the soulmate connections are really going to be different so there is no set uh, soulmate like person like everyone's mom is their soulmate it all depends on how you want to look at it right nonetheless right your mom and we got to incorporate duality here so if your mom can be your soulmate your mom can also be a karmic partner or or be a representative within a karmic partnership ah so we got to we have to, at this level, strive to remember or, or forget about personal love, like like the the 3D definition of Venus. That was like a whole helicopter just going across. That's random. That's random. I'm gonna keep it going though. So, you want to get outside of this mind of that personalized version of I monogamy. This is just my 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 person. No relationships are others, me towards another, and there are different dynamics of that. So within these concepts, anyone can be the karmic partner. Anyone can be the soulmate. It could be a coach. It could be a childhood friend. It could be a work friend. So then the next part about the soulmates is that they come in at different points within your life. So then when you look behind the veil, everything's contracted. Now, here's the key thing to keep in mind. Think of it as like some motivation. There is a soulmate that you are supposed to experience particular bliss with. But it may be in that relationship sense, right? So my my Venus really my or my seventh house soulmate, right? That personalized person. You can experience parts of your whole ideal through various soulmates. So one part of that harmony of that idolized soulmate will come through the version of one person in which you're able to experience a lot of adventure, right? Um, the next part of it will come in the sense of 
like in, in another relationship, being more spiritually inclined. Now, this brings me to the point. A lot of these soulmate happenings are predicated on vibration. And every moment we're shifting in and out of different vibrations, which is like constantly affecting where we're going and who we're going to attract. So what I want you to do and think about in the sense of, like I said, this personalized Venus, right? Or even in the sense of what you what you really need at the time. Just think that like, okay, how can I meet or get on the same vibration as the thing or person that I'm trying to attract? So it's like, this is where astrology can help. So Let's say I see somebody um, who in their progress chart is a progressed Libra, and this may be going through the, the fifth house. It's a sign, it's a signifier like, okay, there's a significant relationship coming here. Okay, and it's gonna embody some of this fifth house stuff. Now, in order to get in line with so with the, the progressed Libra moon you're set to learn something about balance and the balance of relationships. So you can attract this said soulmate maybe when you're going through a seventh house transit or an actual fifth house transit or you're, but you're in a, 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 you're in a frame of mind where it's like, I've put my energy in towards building me. Okay. And then therefore now, because I'm in that fifth house, sense I can attract the relationship that is able to complement me at this particular time so that's the biggest thing y'all like soulmates are there and they're always gonna be there but you help yourself or you get there by doing the work you're getting yourself on the same vibration to attract that okay so Basically, what I'm seeing with this point is that different soulmates you attract at the different times are going to be predicated on the vibration that you're holding, which is going to lead you into having to learn those particular lessons. So just a little bit more clarity. The same person that you were said to attract when you the same person you're meant to have an experience with. You, depending on decisions and the work done, you may attract them at 25 or 35. But it's a matter of you being able to get on the vibration to have the experience. Really think about that. Key concept. Okay. Now, because like I said, I think everyone really understands soulmates so they're gonna come and they're going to assist us and ultimately those soulmates you're all part of the same soul group so there's a real element of destiny with soulmates it's gonna happen it's just a matter of what's going circumstances in the life and when it's attractive all right twin flame time so The more you grow, the more you know. The thing about you guys, you guys have been here with me for years. You trust my my wisdom. And I primarily teach astrology because astrology is the true science. It can be proven, right? It's, uh, there's, what I'm trying to say is in this day and age, there are a lot of programs running within the collective. And this is the matrix view of things, right? We all live in the matrix. So we plug in programs into the matrix and particular programs get more um, attention or they, they have to come from somewhere. So what I'm trying to say to you guys is that the twin flame concept is really something that It's a product of the energies at play. People being on their spiritual journey and then still 
viewing things how they view viewing them right so it's like a process of, of of evolution so maybe there's humanity overall and is under an influence right or that's developed into this twin flame concept that one is here to fulfill a mission with a specific other okay so i'm not just crediting that we all have a cosmic partner right someone who can directly or indirectly assist within our mission right but we don't necessarily it isn't the same thing as a twin flame okay the twin flame thing has been developed and kind of just like most concepts brought into this personalized view okay so it's actually like a, a, a idea a more of a, a of a concept or a program that's been plugged into the matrix as a result of just everything going on so i just wanted to say that you guys can take that how you want it i truly am i'm speaking from my spirit now, I'm not discrediting anyone's experience. How you personalize. You can, anyone can personalize and give the title to someone just like you call someone your wife. You're my twin flame. So, with that said, if you are, if you're looking at something and, and, and believing in the, the parameters of it, you're, you're going to experience said things. They're going to coincide okay now in the idea of bringing it back to the the true essence of a cosmic partnership right your cosmic partner is someone who is 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 meant to experience particular things that you are experiencing but in an opposite manner so this is the twin part okay so within this soul group everyone's learning their different le lessons and then you can say everyone has that the twin to the lesson okay now that doesn't translate all the time towards romance keep in mind it's this has its origins within the soul group what you know what part of being these this group is is coming from right so maybe they have a venus signature and for some it'll involve that for a little bit but what i'm trying to do here is to because there's something within all of these things that get developed like these programs or beliefs like like karma right what goes around comes around it's people believing something that is actually not all the way true and then therefore it warps not just your understanding but the experience of how they're relating to it so for example there can be someone out there who is in a karmic partnership a karmic partnership where they're learning lessons about possessiveness right possessiveness and and um relating in a more balanced way to the other that that individual who is the possessive one who is maybe the neptunian delusion one believes no that's my twin flame and we're meant to be here together to do this but the person in which they're dealing with is coming because of the reflective twin nature is detached they're seeing it like yo we i enjoy your essence but there's like there i'm trying to show you through my actions like that's not it like it's not meant to be that way so you have the opposite effect someone who's trying to court the other into into that monogamous thing and the other who's reflecting the actual lesson that needs to be learned but if you're not consciously aware of that and you are telling yourself that i'm gonna just let you go i'm gonna let you run i'm gonna let you run and then you're gonna come back and 
and you keep relating to them in the way that like, okay, eventually it's just going to be us. You're losing the sight of it. So I got to get this point home. It's a humanitarian energy. All right. So I want to give you an example of Martin Luther King and his speech writer. Uh, I don't want to say his name wrong. Uh, Bayard Rustin, something of the sort. Now, Martin Luther King, both, both men were activists in their own right. And it just so happened that when they, when they crossed paths, so, so they're both out there within their own journey fighting their own battles. Now, here's the interesting thing. Both black men. So in the sense of, in the sense of a lesson being learned, let's say it has to do with equality culture and all of that follow me here we're talking about twins think about who martin luther king was highly respected highly active uh filled with purpose okay and fulfilling the mission and is how he's supposed to now the thing about the other gentleman is he at this time was not only a black man but a uh, a gay black man. Now, this is what I'm trying to tell you. If, if we are to experience something of, of two different perspectives, you have to look at how that's reflecting. So on one, on one hand, you have someone who is celebrated amongst the people for being who they are and following the will of their soul. And then you have another who is persecuted by the same people who are being persecuted by others for being different. So this might seem ambiguous, but if you think about this, right? And because and so it's a purpose. The purpose here is to push overall equality over. But the experiences in which both men had in getting there reflect one another's in two different ways okay but then purpose wise he had the words he spoke like so basically he was the vessel for the words to be carried out okay just think on that i don't want to add too many words to that this specific part let me know if that makes sense and try to think of other examples where great purposes have crossed or assisted one another um we'll we'll we'll, we'll come back and think of another example or of, of another people and if and if you have one feel free to let me know so i feel like going back to soul means it's gonna be more of a relationship aspected energy so whether that soulmate of yours is a coach whether they are a teacher it's something where you sustained a relationship that had a profound effect on your development and then so then the twin flame partnership or the cosmic partnership is like a shooting star or a comet it only comes around every so often, and when it does, it's significant. Now, just to reiterate, everyone's going to have, as above, so below. So, there, will, there can be alignments in the chart in which, in which one does manifest their cosmic partner in that way. Okay? Just like anything, there's no set formula. It's an intuitive, it's a matter of understanding. But I, the reason why, you know, I'm even making this video is for the curious. And just so you're aware that what you choose to believe in, and then like, in this case, like you're, you're, you're giving a name to, it's, you're participating in something. It's almost like believing in a particular God, right? Are God of this and you know we are uh, we, 
we follow this God and this God says there's a, a twin flame out there. That's honestly kind of what it's like. It's a program. It's a program. No, yeah, you know, but perspective and perception is everything. So if you're happy with your twin flame, continue to be happy. Okay? This is just more awareness. All right? It's my thoughts on this topic. Feel free to chime in. Let me know what you think. If you need a reading, click the description link. Send me something. We'll set something up. Till next time, peace.